So I just wanted to share my thoughts quickly about the new Studio Series uh, Nest Deco for Ratchet and Bone Crusher. Now we got one with Bumblebee, but that was for the Bumblebee movie. And the thing is, this is a big deal. And there's certain reasons why I'm saying it's a big deal. And I want to thank King Samlock for actually doing this. But this is such a big deal because since the last night, we've had no Bayverse canon. That's it. There was obviously the Bumblebee movie, but that's a completely different timeline. Um, we've had no canon. Literally nothing from the Bayverse. However, this... Although King Samlock says there's no you know direct sort of specific story with Ratchet and Bone Crusher with this it does kind of add to the movie lore because it, it bridges the gap between the first film and Revenge of the Fallen originally with Bone Crusher in Revenge of the Fallen he was brought back as Michael Bay's uh, choice because that was Michael Bay's favorite character and for a lot of years fans speculated whether this was in fact Bone Crusher, or if it was a different Decepticon but the same body type and the same colour, you know, just like a clone almost. And it apparently isn't because the way, from what I understand, Bone Crusher died in the first film or he was defeated in a way that nearly killed him. Maybe this is rewriting the canon a little bit. And he's come back to infiltrate Nest, you know, under Megatron's command. And then probably after that, infiltrating Nest, that's probably when he joins in the desert battle and gets rid of his, his Nest camouflage. Um, either that or this takes place after Revenge of the Fallen. Because the thing is, uh, Nest is still around between Revenge of the Fallen and Dark of the Moon. Megatron is still around between Revenge of the Fallen and Dark of the Moon. So... Potentially, Bone Crusher survived Revenge of the Fallen, and this either takes place during the events of Revenge of the Fallen when Megatron's been revived, or it takes place after Revenge of the Fallen. But, you know, it, like I said, there's no direct story, apparently. But the reason why it's such a big deal is because we haven't had any Bayverse lore in years. It ended with The Last Night. This is the first. And I know it's studio series, and I know it's, you know, just, you know, a toy line to some people. But, again, the thing is, it's it's been written in a way that gives me hope that we can get future stories. It gives me hope that this has been recognised by Hasbro and the, the design team, everyone there. It gives me hope that they still look at the Bayverse and think, we can add to this. And in a way, it really reminds me of the old uh, days of, you know, Revenge of the Fallen and the Alliance and Defiance and, you know, all what happened with Wreckage in the comics. Um, it really does bring back hope because a lot of the time, the movies are just gone. You know, they're still, still there, but, like, it's ended the story unless it gets picked up in the future. And just these little two figures has, again, brought back that hope that it's still being recognised and potentially we might get future Nest releases, we could get like a stealth version of Optimus Prime, that would be amazing. You could repurpose that as Nemesis Prime. You could repurpose these as like shattered glass movie versions of the characters, but it opens that door to explore more areas. It really, really does. Because we had loads of repaints in, you know, Revenge of the Fall and Dark of the Moon. We had, how many bumblebees did we have? We had, like, we had stealth bumblebees. We had, um, the, like, the mech tech uh, bumblebees. Uh, we had loads of iron hides. We had the, um, uh, what was the name? Like, the Defender iron hides. You know, iron hide in the G1 colours. We had Rescue Ratchet. We had... Uh, Robovision Optimus Prime, we had loads of different decos, and I think there wasn't any specific story with them, I just I think with that it was just a case of Hasbro putting out repaints of the toys, I don't think it tied into the main story, maybe they did once or twice but overall I think that was just to, for the toys whereas this, because it's studio series it's sort of expanding into that lore 
for the movie and it's kind of saying you know bone crusher got defeated by optimus in the first film yes but he came back in the second film and it's shown you that this is actually trying to tie its tie itself in with the films and it's not just a bio like bone crusher does this bone crusher does that it's literally bone crusher is defeated and now it's back and it really does solidify the the theory that was it bone crusher and Vision of the fallen or was it just a clone that michael bay wanted to put in because it was his favorite character no this solidifies that was bone crusher and it's it's amazing to hear that it, we've pretty much got confirmation now that was bone crusher could you imagine if if powered up optimus prime with jet fire spotted bone crusher and it's like ah you you again oh don't make me take your face again. I've just taken the Fallens. Yeah, that would that'd be pretty funny. Jet powered up since Prime vs. Bone Crusher. That would be that would be a treat. I I think I know who'd win that. Definitely. I, I can just imagine just Starscream watching from a distance, just seeing Optimus just beat down Megatron, beat down the Fallen. Starscream retreats and just got Bone Crusher in the distance, just staring like, oh dear, I better go. <laughs> But no, I I really, really do like the fact that Hasbro is acknowledging the movie still, adding to the lore, potentially adding future things to the lore, really expanding on that knowledge. Maybe there's potential future plot holes in a film that we never got answered that potentially with the Buzzworthy Bumblebee line or future studio series, I know I had my studio selects and I still want to expand on that a little bit, but potentially we, we might fill in, fill in those gaps. So I just want to say to King Samlock and everyone else who, who had a part of this, really, really appreciate, you know, really appreciate that. Um, to some you might just think it's a toy, it's a, re, it's a repaint, redeco, that's all it is. But, you know, for people like me who's really grown up with Michael Bay films and they're, that's my G1, that's my G1, always will be. And to know that that continuity stopped years ago, and to have new stories, and again, I know it wasn't said that it doesn't follow a specific intended story, but in a way it's adding to the law, but it's not telling you how it adds to the law, it's just saying it does technically happen in the film, between the films, or during the films off screen. But again, as someone who, who's carried these films with me from since I started Transformers until now, to have new content, fresh content, even if it's just one line on the back of the figure, it really shows it's not just a repaint, it has a purpose. And I really, really appreciate that we're getting new stories. You know, maybe, maybe it would be good if we elaborated on, like, maybe a comic adaptation of Ratchet vs. Bone Crusher or The Nest Bumblebee. If we had a comic adaptation, that'd be perfect. But it also leaves a door open to our theories, our interpretation. If they don't say it follows a specific story, maybe fans could come up with some story where Ratchet and Bone Crusher go at it off screen or in between the events of Revenge of the Fall and Dark of the Moon. Maybe something like that happens. Just incredible, amazing. Thank you, I don't know if King Samlock's watching this or any of the Hasbro design team, but thank you. Really, really appreciate that, and I'm looking forward to these figures coming out. So, yeah, please do a Stealth Optimus. That, mm, that would be good. I would love that. And a Stealth Galvatron would be pretty cool as well. And now, now I'm thinking about it. How about that Shadow Command Megatron that I did for Studio Selects? That would be pretty cool. Anyway, take care. I appreciate that everything, because I never got the original Bone Crusher or the Dark of the Moon Ratchet, so... Here's a chance for me to actually get them, get the weapons, and um, and really enjoy those figures. So, thank you, and I hope everyone has an amazing night. Transform and roll out. <laughs>